Now at five more deaths and many more positive cases of coronavirus in Indiana, the state health commissioner shares some key insight into the numbers. Unemployment numbers are climbing quickly due to COVID-19. Just ahead, we'll tell you how Hoosiers are being impacted. I'm Nicole Griffin tonight on the city's southeast side with a call to action. Why a local charter school is asking for your old tablets or laptops. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Thank you for joining us here at 5. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. The look of our newscast will be a little different for the time being as we continue to work for you, bringing you all of the day's developments and the things you need to know about the spread of the coronavirus. And in an effort to increase our social distancing, we are reducing the number of people working in the WRTV building. And I'll be co-anchoring from my home where we have set up a temporary studio here. But for now, let's get right to today's developments. Two new deaths reported today, one each in Hancock and Howard counties for a total of 14 statewide. 115 more Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus for a statewide total of 477. More than 3,300 people have been tested. And now let's take a look at the bigger picture here. Globally, there are about 459,000 positive cases and nearly 21,000 deaths. About 870 of those are in the United States. Nearly 114,000 people around the world have recovered, about 360 of those in the U.S. Now, with unemployment numbers surging at an unprecedented rate because of COVID-19, many are trying to get unemployment benefits going as quickly as possible in order to stay afloat and make ends meet. RTV6's Troy Washington is working for you, showing you how this is impacting Hoosiers who are trying to navigate through such uncertain times. My job, my bar specifically, we saw it coming. We actually closed our doors before the state mandated it. Chris Clark has worked in the service industry for three years. He says aside from the time a natural disaster made them stop working, he's always had a job. It's just uh, one of those situations where uh, you you really see how big a population is because I'm a part of a few uh, bartending pages and service industry pages on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And that's all that anybody's talking about. In the last few days, 20,000 Hoosiers have applied for unemployment. That number is expected to jump to 120,000 in the next month. That's according to experts on economy, and Clark thinks those numbers might not be far off, considering the talk he's been hearing in his circles. And it's not like it's affecting just a small portion of us, it's affecting everyone. Uh, everyone's out of work, everyone's trying to search for things. Governor Holcomb explained this same week last year, only 3,100 people had applied for unemployment. But this year, due to the layoffs because of the coronavirus, the number is now through the roof. I actually had filed for unemployment it just so happened that I got hired at the job that I did the very next day. Uh, not a common occurrence, I guess, for other people in that situation. But luckily for me, I was able to find some temp work at a grocery store here in town. Since Clark has been able to land what is considered an essential job for now, he's in the clear, but thousands haven't been so fortunate. Working for you in downtown, Troy Washington, RTB6. The Department of Workforce Development has uh, closed its office downtown and Work One is career services uh, locations across the state. They are closed for now to encourage social distancing. The Work, uh, work One locations in the Workforce Development Department is encouraging people to use it, the online resources part of its website for filing for unemployment. Tomorrow, we'll get the national unemployment data. All right, thank you, Mark. And Congress has reached a deal to help jumpstart the economy and bring some relief to businesses and workers. It could be passed and enacted within days. It would be the biggest economic stimulus package in modern American history and comes as President Trump is anxious to reopen parts of the economy. ABC's Alex Brochet has the latest from Washington. A deal reached in principle. Now anxious Americans await the votes. Struggling Americans are going to go to their mailboxes and find four-figure checks to help with their bills. Why? Because the Senate stepped up. 
Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell making it clear the Senate would pass the $2 trillion COVID-19 emergency package today, turning eyes towards the House. The deal comes after five tense days of negotiations. It's providing over $800 billion in support for businesses, big and small. It will also allow companies to furlough workers so they, they can stay on as employees, so that when God willing, this crisis abates, they can quickly resume work with their employer and businesses can reassemble. Potentially saving the job of 29-year-old Edith Musquiz, who was laid off. And this layoff completely changes our way of living. Um, you know, it's hard enough to get by on two incomes, but now to not be able to rely on my share is completely unsettling. The bill also includes a one-time payment of $1,200 directly to most American taxpayers. More than $172 billion in resources for those fighting this outbreak on the front lines and $400 million to help states prepare for 2020 election challenges because of the virus. The stimulus package includes some strings, too. An oversight committee for big business bailouts and a provision that businesses controlled by the president, vice president, members of Congress and the cabinet aren't eligible to receive federal funds. With a deal reached, President Trump is also hoping to ease restrictions on social distancing that could allow some businesses to reopen by Easter. Our country wants to be open. Our people want it to be open and they want it. They want they're raring to go. Something even his top experts have pushed back on. And many of those self-distancing restrictions were put in place by governors who believe they're working. We do need to reduce the spread of the infection because the evidence suggests that the density control measures may be working. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The White House said everyone will soon be able to get a coronavirus test, but so far that is not happening in Indiana. RTV6 reporter Cameron Riddle joins us live from the State House, where he asks state officials how the state is handling testing here. Now, Cameron, we learned more about why those numbers are growing, even though not everyone is getting a test. That's exactly right, Amanda. So today we learned that the state has found 477 confirmed cases of coronavirus here in Indiana. But is that because more tests are being given out or that there are more positive cases out there? State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Box said there are more tests being done and there are more positive cases. But that's all because who is being tested? To give you an example of that increase, this time last week, 243 tests had been reported to ISDH. As of today, we reported 3,356. About 14 of those, 14 percent of those who are being tested are testing positive. While this rate may seem high, it's expected because we're testing the highest risk individuals, those who are ill and those who are at high risk for exposure because of where they work or whom they work with. All right, so there you have it. The doctor saying the numbers are going up because of the population that is being tested. Now, Box did not indicate if that population of testing is going to change. However, she did announce that there was a new arrival of additional supplies for Hoosier healthcare workers. A shipment of supplies from the federal stockpile will be handed out in the coming days. Those supplies do include masks, gowns, gloves, and face shields. Dr. Box even said that some of those supplies will be handed out as early Early as today. We're live at the State House tonight. I'm Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Good to hear that progress is being made, Cameron. Thank you. RTV6 is putting the focus on how communities are working together during the COVID-19 outbreak. Tonight, our Nicole Griffin is finding out how a local real estate company is helping hundreds of students who don't have access to their e-learning work. Around 900 students attend Victory College Prep here on the city's southeast side. The principal tells me one third of those students don't have the tablets or laptops they need to get their e-learning work done. And tonight we're finding out that is not the only need. I know that this is really hard for educators across the city. I know that we're hurting because we want to see our kids and we want to make sure that we can make the rest of the school year as meaningful as possible. Chelsea Easter is the principal at Victory College Prep. The K through 12 charter school has students from all across the city of Indianapolis. A lot of our kids are coming to us with academic deficits and we work so hard to make sure we can close that gap for them. And this is really causing some challenges today. Her biggest concern is students falling behind. Right now they have a need for around 300 laptops or tablets for students to access their work. As long as it connects to the internet, that's the biggest need we have. But it's not the only need. 
Every Monday from 11 to 1, they pass out five meals for breakfast and five meals for lunch. But right now, they need donations to provide dinner as well. And we're just looking for any items that a... 15 year old with a microwave can make like who doesn't have pasta and sauce at their house right like that um, some of these different safe options. That is where Fishers based Evelo team Keller Williams Realty is stepping in. Chelsea is one of their clients. After finding out about these needs, they put the call out to employees and the community. They started accepting donations and shopping for food. We need to figure out how to feed these kids at nighttime and feed their families and really just getting those laptops and tablets gathered. So pretty simple ask. Um, and I think we can come together as a community to reach that goal. It's really hard to make sure that you could focus on your academics when you're worried about yourself or your siblings or if there's going to be dinner today or dinner tomorrow. And for the majority of our kids, that is reality. Food or laptop donations can be made by contacting Evalo Team or Victory College Prep. Working for you on the southeast side, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Nicole, thank you. If you want to help by dropping off food or laptops, you can contact them by going to, you can contact the uh, real estate company. The school's executive uh, director will have the details on RTV6 News app. Evelvo Team Realty uh, will also have uh, information on how you can handle. They're also putting together uh, a tub for food donations outside of their location on East 11th Street, well, East 116th Street in Fishers. And now to the impact of the virus on Indiana's primary. Every Hoosier will have the opportunity to vote absentee in the primary, which has been moved to June 2nd due to coronavirus. And it's possible the entire election might be vote by mail. The Indiana Election Commission today approved no excuse absentee voting, which means you don't need a reason such as being out of town or unavailable on that day. In addition, the Election Commission chairman said they'll meet next month to discuss moving to a vote by mail election if necessitated by the public health crisis. And still ahead of five on RTV6, people need this kind of cooperation and working together more than ever before. How pop-ups are filling heavy needs in the new age of distancing. Plus, amid the closures and shutdowns, RTV6 is finding hopeful stories of open doors. How one central Indiana business is still making an impact right now, coming up. And fog may have delayed our beautiful day, but we couldn't be denied. Man, is it nice out there. Temperatures around 60, the sunshine through the afternoon. We'll talk about the gradual changes ahead. The state is asking all food pantries to stay open during this difficult time and working together, the city of Indianapolis and the Midwest Food Bank began pop-up food distribution sites at three Indianapolis churches today. One of those churches was here at the Barnes United Methodist Church at 900 West 30th Street. And if you missed it, don't worry, there are more opportunities, including tonight. Families can just drive up to receive fresh produce and dairy items free of charge. Besides Barnes United Methodists, the other two sites this week are Hovey Street Church of Christ and Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. There's another giveaway at each site tonight from 6 to 8 and then again Friday from 1 to 3 and 6 to 8 and then on Saturday from 1 to 3 o'clock. The service industry and its workers are one of the groups taking a hit by the COVID-19 crisis. So here at RTV6, we are featuring local establishments that are open to serve you. And in today's We're Open Indie profile, RTV6's Lauren Casey takes us to a family-owned restaurant in Franklin serving doing double duty, open for carry out and offering free meals to more than 100 people in need every day. Making food out of uh, <laughs> out of any you know all these contributions from other folks too. It's five o'clock in downtown Franklin, and south of the courthouse, Main Street is quiet. But inside Richard's brick oven pizza. Tonight we've got a pasta dish with lots of veggies and chicken. The centerpiece brick oven is ablaze, and a few busy hands prepare to feed hundreds. You know, everybody's in the same boat here, and uh, we just, we have the ability, so we want to fill the need. 
filling the need while filling bellies. Richard Goss is the owner and he's proud to partner with Chef Andre's World Central Kitchen, a global organization working to create food resiliency in the face of disasters. It just seemed to th be the right thing to do. In a time of uncertainty, people in the Franklin community can know they have a warm meal waiting. We just come to the car and say how many. Uh, yes, we are. How many do you have? We want you here. We want you to take care of your family. And take care of the most vulnerable. We talked to a good Samaritan not wanting any recognition, picking up meals for her senior neighbors. There's just this, just this attitude of what can everybody do to help others. And I think that that represents our community of Franklin. As she tells the staff how many meals she needs, she tells me people here are not panicking. I grew up here and uh, my husband grew up here and we moved back after living away and, and it really is that type of community. And that is Franklin. Restaurants like Maine and Madison that closed up shop this week donated what they had in their kitchen to Richard. The owner of a local cocktail bar, The Mint, lends a hand in Richard's kitchen. You know, we just started doing this with no regard for, for fun. Funding, but uh, the community has, you know, the, everybody's stepping up. Let's take care of each other. In Franklin, Lauren Casey, RTV6. Thank you, Lauren, for that. And if you are in need, anyone is welcome between 6 and 7 p.m. The kitchen and parking lot are very busy last night, as you can see. You will stay in your car. Richard says they welcome donations to keep this effort going. The restaurant is also open for carryout to customers. And if you are craving barbecue, Smoke and Barrel Barbecue is open on the east side in Warren Township. The family-owned business is located on Camp Sertoma. They are working to remain open during these challenging times to support those who've supported them over the years. Smoke and Barrel is available for delivery through Market Wagon, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. They also have no contact pickup at their restaurant at 2316 South German Church Road. You can read more about Smoke and Barrel Barbecue and a long list of Indy area restaurants that are open for service on our website. Find the link on our homepage at theindychannel.com. It is also on your RTV6 app. And coming up at 6, Brad Brown shows us the eateries at Indy City Market ready to serve you. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast, and we certainly got off to a foggy start today. These pictures from Broad Ripple are similar to those all around Indiana this morning, but as promised, once it burned off, the sun came out and the temperatures warmed up quickly. Definitely the best day of the week so far. But Kevin is now tracking some changes in the forecast for us. Hey, Kevin. And Mark, the changes are gradual, so we've got a great evening. And that is a nice tee shot. Look, he's confident. He's feeling good. And what a great day for golf. And we'll tee up the changes coming our way. I think the fact that it wasn't very windy today and the winds are light and the sunshine that came out makes 60 degrees feel even better. We're at 60 now, sunset at 8.03, so you've still got plenty of time here before uh, the sun sets. Evidence of spring, check that out. Very colorful across central Indiana, and that will continue to warm up. And I think we'll see the greens turn greener, and a lot of yellows and the flowers and everything start to really uh, change here in the next few days. Notice the chance for rain is, is somewhat significant the next few days, but the difference, it's not going to be an all-day rain. We'll late, wait most of tomorrow before our rain chances go up tomorrow night, have some dry weather Friday as well, and then a round of showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, you will be able to enjoy some of these milder temperatures. Temperatures peak on Saturday ahead of a cold front, and that may well be the period too where we see the stronger shower and thunderstorm chances. Some of those may be on the strong to severe side. 59 in Zionsville, Edinburgh also at 59, 60 the temperature in Greenwood. As you look statewide from 53 degrees that's the cool spot in northeast Indiana, 62, the warmest I can find at a glance. Down in Bloomington, say hello to Phoebe. She's on her back legs, ready uh -huh. to go for a walk. What Today was a good day for it. Oh, it's a great day to get out, take a walk, and you can do that in our distancing. You just stay away uh, from everybody else. Keep your distance and don't follow too closely as you're walking your dogs. <laughs> Temperatures down to 50 at 11 o'clock tonight. As we mentioned, tomorrow, most of tomorrow dry. It's late in the day and tomorrow night that our rain chances will go up. Temperatures still back into the mid 60s with that late day rain threat showing up and temperatures will stay very mild overnight. Temperatures low 60s from north 
to uh, south, we see a five or six degree temperature jump. Temperatures around the metro area tomorrow at 67, almost 70 degrees to the south. Temperatures will be that warm on Saturday. During the day tomorrow, lots of cloud cover and the chance for showers increasing as we go to the evening hours. Seven day forecast as you look ahead, showers, thunderstorms Friday, Saturday at 71. When we cool off, the rain chance diminishes, should dry out Sunday and 56 degrees. We'll be back with more news right after this. 2020 Nissan Altima. Leaving your homes to pick up needed groceries, medicine, or food, they're not prohibited in the governor's stay-at-home order. Something you need to know, though, if you're headed to a Meyer store, effective immediately, they are asking you not to bring in reusable bags unless you're using the shop and scan service. This is for the safety of the employees. This is a temporary request for the time being.